Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about the ColorOS update to my Find X2 Pro from Oppo. Earlier today, they made the unveiling of the ColorOS 11 operating system or basically unveiled the start of the beta program that they were going to basically release for the Find X2 line of devices. So the Find X2, the Find X2 Pro, and of course the Lamborghini edition. Uh, but not only that, I want to do basically my favorite features of ColorOS 11 running on my device, but I also want to share with you guys the rollout plan for when other devices are going to be receiving ColorOS 11, because I'm pretty sure that's number one thing a lot of us want to know. When is my device going to get this update? So let's not waste any time. This is TK and this is ColorOS 11 running on my Find X2 Pro. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So here we have it, my Find X2 Pro running ColorOS version 11, again on top of Android 11. And as you can see here, the Easter egg is here. And of course, we can just basically play with it and then bring back one more time Android 11. Uh, again, this is a current beta that's running. This is the latest beta available. And of course, I'll give you guys some more information about that in the description below. Um, what I want to share with you guys today again is my favorite features talking about basically what's cool what there are the new things that we have here on my Find X2 Pro with ColorOS, uh, specifically ColorOS 11. We're going to talk about the new features in ColorOS 11. Also, what are the features that came over from Android 11, like the things that we saw on our Pixel line devices over to our Find X2 Pro with ColorOS 11. So there's some new things coming over that way as well. So the first thing we'll start off with is our launcher. We have a lot of new customization that we're able to do. So if I press and hold on the background, we're able to obviously add widgets and do normal things there. We can change our wallpaper. We can jump into the basically static live wallpaper, our plus wallpapers, those are the new ones. And of course, additional options that we're able to use. And you can customize them, of course. Um, icon packs are now supported as far as the ability of customizing your icons. So you have standard, which is the default. We also have material design, we have pebble. And those are the normal ones that you normally see directly within you know, color OS. But we have the ability of jumping over to say something like Viral. This is a custom icon pack that I've downloaded, even downloading UX LED, and you can see it changes all of the stuff. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't support all of the icons, but definitely looks a lot better. So you can see here the calendar, the weather, the clock, all of those things are nice. Uh, now, but that doesn't stop right there. We have also the ability of customizing our layout. Obviously, everything is from there. I can also go through and customize our widgets, our transitions, as well as going in a little bit more. Uh, I did want to show you guys real quick some cool new transitions. So you notice right there, I have the nice, nice little option when I'm switching between uh, different pages here, and it kind of does that nice little carousel option. Uh, last thing, of course, we can jump into more as we have some additional customizations. Uh, we can change, obviously, the home screen or the uh, type of launcher is the one with a drawer or without a drawer. The home screen layout. The swipe down is also functional for us to be able to customize it to be swiped down to open notifications. So that's something that I really like and I always like to have in my, uh, especially with devices that are this big. But we also have this new feature called Quick Launch, which is really cool. So I'll go ahead and turn off the display. I'll turn it back on. We'll notice first and foremost, I'm actually customizing into here and I also have access to some new apps here. So here, I can actually launch shortcuts straight directly from the lock screen. So as I'm unlocking it here, I have a couple of apps. I'll go ahead and open it up. I have uh, Instagram on the right. I'll go ahead and open it up. It'll open up Instagram. And this is a quick way for us to use basically the most frequently used apps, like frequently used three apps on your device. It works really nice and it works very quickly. Again, you can customize it directly under the launcher setup. So you go under launcher, you go more, and then you go down to the option where it says quick launch. Very nice and very easy. And of course, lock screen mantra. And of course, we can customize the always on display. But I want to talk to you guys this about this under the personalization tab. So this is very much a very cool, very easy way to set things up. But of course, you have access to the feed on the left. Um, you can customize and download a whole bunch of different things that you want. Uh, but of course, I like the ability of customizing the lock screen as far as when it comes to the home screen and the setup, especially with icon packs like this. Now, you'll notice obviously that we have dark mode activated. That's something that we already knew in there. Uh, we have the ability of customizing it, adding a whole bunch of different shortcuts. All of those things are normal. Under the settings, we have the ability of jumping into the personalization section. So this gives us the ability of customizing our device to the next level. First and foremost, obviously, we have themes. This is standard. Wallpapers, again, standard. But the Always On Display has gained a very, really nice, cool feature. The ability of customizing and creating our own Always On Display lock screen logo. Meaning, uh, on top of the fact that we have these standard ones, so the digital clock, the analog clock, and all of those, even the text bubbles, and of course, all the other options, you have the ability of creating your own. You'll notice I have a few designs that I'm able to actually customize. So here, these are the custom patterns, but those are the ones I created. So I have this one, which has, you know, TK Bay, let the beard guide you. Again, one of my mantras. Uh, this one is also another one that I created. I actually customized this design to show it this way. So the best way to do it is I'll go ahead and select it. I'll say apply. 
And of course, as soon as I turn off my display, it goes into that and this becomes my always on display. Very nice and very simple. And I can create a really easy one. Let's go ahead and do a plus one real quick. We'll pick out a pattern. Let's say we'll pick out, um, we'll pick out this one and then we'll go back here. We'll pick a color. I can actually select it and start drawing and I can actually extenuate in it. Now I'm not drawing the pattern, but I'm actually drawing where the colors, uh, the level of color is coming in here. So I can see here, I can definitely do that. And of course, last but not least, we'll add in some yellow. So that kind of looks like a really nice one. So I'll go ahead and hit next. And then now it starts drawing it in the form that I did and it kind of leaves it there. I can pick whatever options that we have there. So either the digital clock or the analog. And of course we have date, battery and notifications. You can customize them and of course have a nice little custom color theme here. So I'll go ahead and say apply. And that becomes my next always on display. So I'll go ahead and turn it off. I'll give it a second and it starts drawing that pattern. Absolutely fantastic. Again, you're not limited to pattern. You can also create them where basically uh, they're using different uh, text. So like in this one, TK, let the beard guide you and you can just go in and customize it to your heart's content. So that's under the always on display. Of course, we have icon styles. We talked about that grid layout. Fingerprint styles, you're able to customize the different uh, kind of animations around unlocking. So we have the nice little, uh, you know, fireworks there. This is kind of like the, I would say like, you know, kind of like shards kind of flying out. And then of course you have some nice options. Even there's a smoke option where you get. So for me, I like this option, we can customize it. And then this takes me to the accent color. This is something that is also new in color OS 11. Now it gives us the ability of actually customizing the color. So you notice there's different accent colors. Uh, you're able to jump in there and customize it. So as you're selecting either dark mode or light mode, this gives you the ability of actually using it and customizing it to the color that you want. Now, for me, I actually decided to go with more of a bluish tone. That's personal preference and you can customize it to your heart's content. And of course you can see exactly as it shows up. So right now you'll notice the colors up there are blue. If I go green, I'll be able to change it once I apply it. But if I don't, it doesn't go away. So I'll go ahead and hit green and I'll give it a second to actually customize. I'll go ahead and give it a second to jump out. We'll jump back out. You'll notice green again is sitting in there and that's where we see it. So for me personally, I like the blue color or actually I like the cool color. I'll go ahead and hit apply, go back out one more time. And then again, it applies. Very easy and very, very simple. Uh, font styles are already built in. You have uh, Roboto, uh, Oppo Sans or more. You can download additional ones. Uh, and of course, notification drawer, you can actually go in there and customize the different icon styles. So the shape of the icon, maybe closer to pixel. Um, edge lighting is also in here. You can customize it and change the different edge lighting from either incoming calls or notifications. You can go in there and pick from different colors. So here from VIP contact, all incoming colors and can, you can pick the color as it permeates on the sides. Uh, and this is something that is very nice that you're able to customize and it looks really good when the device is facing down. The last thing here, which is really, really cool, is the ability of creating custom ringtones. So this is actually under the um, the notification section or basically the custom option. I'll go ahead and raise the volume on to you guys to hear what we have. So I'll go ahead and say this is the relax note. So I'll go ahead and generate. I'll give it a second to finish. So you notice these are some of the ringtones I've already generated here. So I'll go ahead and play this one. So this is the existing library uh, and of course what we're seeing here essentially is we have a, a library of music songs that we can play with. So I'll go ahead and pick out Vision and I'll give it a second here, let it go higher. I'll go ahead and select it. So by default it has basically a simple, uh, vibrant and of course thrilling, relaxing, slow and fast. And as I move it, And then once we're done, we hit the button that says generate and it'll save it and it'll be part of my ringtone library and I'm able to select it and apply it to a call or a notification. Very nice and very simple and very easy to customize. You can access it directly from the personalization tab or it actually has its own app under the Oppo Labs that's present in the app drawer. Now, before we go too far, I do want to mention that we actually also have a new option when it comes to dark mode. So we still have the ability of selecting either dark mode or light mode. We obviously have the ability of also turning on to the auto switch. So basically depending on sunrise and sunset, but one of the cool things is the ability of actually selecting one of three different levels of dark mode. So we have the enhanced mode, the medium mode that's slightly lighter, and of course gentle, which is also a lot lighter. And this helps us actually get the, the right level of dark mode, I guess I would say, in, for the level that you need. Uh, this is something that Oppo heard from a lot of their users when uh, 7.1 was coming out and 7.0 for ColorOS, and of course they apply, uh, applied it there. 
Personally, I like to stick with Enhance, but if you'd like to be able to customize it, it's definitely here and ready for you to use. A couple of new options as well are in the actual battery section here, which is under the battery section for super power saving mode. This is gonna be able to give you a lot more battery life, especially if you're running really low on battery. Uh, by giving you the ability of running only up to six applications and that will provide you the ability of basically extending the last five to ten percent till you're able to get to a charger very nice and of course you have the standard power saving mode but under the more battery settings we also have a new option which is called optimized night charging now one thing oppo is known for is super fast charging specifically the find x2 pro this device uses a 65 watt charger that can charge it super fast but of course a lot of us worry about battery health and extended battery usage so Overnight charging, if you ever do that on your device, this actually enables you to give it the ability of actually limiting the power that it charges it at. So overall, most of the night the device will stick to about 80% battery level. And when it gets closer to the morning, it'll actually finish off the last 20%. So taking longer to charge the device, not because it can't charge it fast, but it also it does that actually to help maintain battery health. So it's still capable of charging your device very fast whenever you need it but of course overnight charging it definitely optimizes it for better battery health of course so we just talked about the uh, battery optimizations we talked about obviously the launcher customizations of course even the personalization to the device but we of course want to talk about the camera and new modes that we have here directly within the camera app under the video tab we have a couple of new options first is obviously hdr video which is something that is new the second thing is the ability of using something new that came with uh, color os 7.2 but now obviously two more devices with uh, color os 11. And that's the ability of using the stabilized mode. So here's ultra steady, that's your normal ultra steady. And you notice right there, if I'm looking at the device, this is my ultra steady. This is the, the field of view that I'm able to see with it. But if I turn on basically the pro level, you're able to fit so much more and it still gives you the ability of using stabilization. So ultra steady pro and super steady are uh, ultra steady are now present in our color os devices and of course coming to more devices in the near future near you let me show you guys a couple of samples from here uh, one with the obviously without stabilization with the ultra steady and of course super ultra steady so the first thing we're going to start is uh, we're going to use the main sensor back sensor here uh, without any stabilization i'm not turning on any actual steady options i want to give you guys somewhat of a baseline and we're walking because of the stabilization so let's go ahead and turn on the first step so the next level is ultra steady now this establishes stabilization by also doing a little bit of a crop on the sensor which means uh, we don't actually have the same kind of field of view. Now, again, great for what you want to do if the subject is not close, but what if you want to be closer and still fit so much more? Enter step three. And now we have something called the Ultra Steady Pro, which gives us the ability of not only having that stabilization, but also having a wider field of view, which is really good, specifically if you're trying to fit in so much more or if you're trying to vlog using the camera and, of course, getting that stabilization done with the brand new Color OS 11 features. Goes without saying, obviously, is that it definitely provides a much better experience when you're able to use a wider field of view while still being able to get stabilization on your device when you're taking video absolutely fantastic now let's talk about the cool new android 11 features that came over here so first and foremost obviously is device control so i'm going to go ahead and hold the power button i'm going to release this give it a second and you can see right there on my left the normal slider for power button that we have here with color os but now we have the ability of using the google home function so meaning as long as i have google home installed and i'm logged into it and i have all my my account customized and uh, authenticated I'm able to actually add different options. So I'm able to, able to go in there, customize the experience. And the really cool thing about it is now we have those cool new features from Android 11 present directly on our power button. I don't have to open that app. I don't do anything. Anywhere I am in the UI, all I have to do is press and hold the power button. And now I have the ability of turning off all my lights, my office lights, um, accessing my uh, Chromecast Ultra that I have here, and even go and dro dropping in over to the kitchen display. But again, very easy, very nice. And I like the way they incorporate it. They kept the function that their power menu has, and now, of course, it's all present in here. So the next thing we're going to talk about, of course, is the permission options that we now have as part of Android 11. So under Permission Manager, we can go in there and let's say select the camera as an option, and we'll jump down to some of the ones that we don't actually gave permission or didn't give them permission. So we'll jump into, and let's say, um, Instagram. So under Instagram, there's the option of basically giving it the ability of using the uh, permission of using the camera while the app is running, or I can actually deny it, or even more, the new option in Android 11 is the ability of making it ask me permission to use the camera every single time. Meaning Instagram as an app will not be able to turn on the camera in the background without asking me first. And that would be basically cause it to pump up with a little message saying, can you allow, or do you want to allow access to this? And this is something that's new, which also gives us the ability of you know, customizing the level of permissions that we have within Android 11. Uh, the last thing, of course, I definitely want to talk about, which 
is part of Android 11, but it kind of came out also, it's rolling out to Android 10.0, is nearby sharing, and if I'm not mistaken, the new toggle for it is built into Android 11 here with ColorOS 11, so it's definitely very nice. Ability of actually putting applications in a bubble form to be able to use them whenever you're in a communication, so you don't actually have to close the app, you can just minimize it, leave it as a bubble head, and of course, when you want to interact with it, you open it up, you respond, and of course, you can close it. Um, really nice, it's definitely very nice, and it, it is actually present here, currently supported with, um, I think if I'm not mistaken, Facebook Messenger, and of course, as well as if you're using uh, Android Messages. So the native messaging app, unfortunately, does not support it yet. Uh, Telegram does support it, that's something that you also wanna keep in mind. Uh, the other thing we also have is the new aggregation of silent messages, and of course, notifications, so the aggregation of notifications is also in here. But one of the really cool things that we haven't seen before, so this is normal bubbles, and of course, when I'm done with this, I can just select it, and I'll go ahead and give it a second. And once I'm done, actually you select, sorry, you select it, bring it down and close it. But there's another function that's built into ColorOS 11 that is really, really nice. And it's called the return bubble and it's specifically for gamers. So we'll go ahead and open up GameSpace. And as you know, GameSpace is the gaming hub that we have here directly within ColorOS. So you can see basically the CPU performance, the remaining power level, and of course, signal strength and GPU performance. This is what you're using. And you're able to also select the different options. So between low power, uh, competition mode, which is basically everything is running at 100%, uh, quick startup, network priority, uh, you know, accidental touches, and of course, block messages. A whole bunch of different options to keep you in the game and enjoy it. So I have Asphalt 9, PUBG, and of course, Call of Duty. But I'll go ahead and launch PUBG specifically because I like this really cool new feature. So first and foremost, uh, the launcher still sits here on the left. You're able to customize it. You're able to change the brightness on the, on the device. Everything works the exact same way we've seen before. We have a few other options screen recording. I'll go ahead and minimize the audio here. So you have the ability of doing screen recording, screenshots, all the good stuff. Let's say I'm going to start the game. I'm in the processing of getting in the game. Um, we're waiting to see basically how the match is going. And um, in the middle of that conversation, we get a text. So I'll go ahead and turn on here. I'll go ahead and send myself a text. Now, you'll notice right there that the message did come up here. So I get a text message. I'm able to interact with it. The bubble function that we have from Android 11 works great. But let's say I actually don't want to interact with this message. I'm going to go ahead and cancel here. I'm going to go home. So I went home and I'm going to give it a second. But you'll notice right there, there's that little bubble that's sitting right there on the top. This is a countdown timer built in in here. So that tells me how much time is left for me before the match starts within PUBG. This is separate from here. So I'll go ahead and close this. So I'm able to use my device. I can go into settings, customize, do whatever I want. I can go in, open up YouTube, Gmail, whichever. And as long as I know when the timer is running, I can actually go in there. And by the way, I have my live stream in here. And the easy part about this is as time goes on, I know exactly when I have to jump back in because if I go ahead and hit it, it's going to take me back into it. And of course, as you can see here, the timer is almost done and it's basically ready for us for the match to start. Now, in this situation, it's super, super helpful because you're able to actually use this and jump out of it and go do other things without necessarily losing a beat, especially when you're just sitting there for about 30 to 45 seconds waiting for the match to start. This is really, really cool. And again, built into Color OS 11. Um, before we go too far, I definitely want to talk about the, one of the coolest features that Google and Oppo work together to integrate into ColorOS, and that's three-finger trans uh, translation, which gives us the ability of basically using the feature that they've had for some time to be able to use screenshots. So if you swipe down on any ColorOS device, for the most part, that does that for you. It essentially gives you the ability of just doing swipe down, you take a screenshot. The new feature that we have now is, let's say you're on a website that doesn't have English. So essentially here, there's a website, it's an Arabic newspaper, I can actually basically press and hold and then swipe down, basically do a selection. And now we have the button here option for translate. I'm actually able to allow it to go through using a Google Lens and it'll actually go through and translate. So here it talks about Nancy's date concert on TikTok for video horoscope predictions uh, for the cancer sign. And of course you are on date with very, very nice and very, very easy. Do you find these results useful? Let's go ahead and say yes. But again, very simple and very good, especially if you're traveling, you're able to take a picture of something and then do the three finger uh, translation option and translate your content anywhere. And this is by far one of the most unique features that comes only on ColorOS devices, which is really, really nice. So now that we've talked about all the cool new features on ColorOS 11, let me go ahead and share with you guys the rollout plan for devices. So. Uh, the dates and devices that I'm going to share with you guys today are excluding devices that are currently in Europe. Uh, what will happen basically for Europe, it'll be released basically in the final version. So beta is not going to be available there. But starting September 14th, the Find X2, the Find X2 Pro, and the Find X2 Pro Lamborghini Edition will be supporting the ColorOS beta on uh, ColorOS 11 beta on them. And as of the end of September, we'll have the new Reno 3 4G, the Reno 3 uh, Pro 4G, as well as the F17 Pro. And by October, we'll be able to basically get the Reno 4, uh, basically the Reno 4 Pro 5G. So if you have that, this is definitely a good time there. 
In November, we're going to be able to see the Reno 4 5G as well as the Reno 4 Pro 4G. So those are going to be definitely really good. And of course, we'll give us access to those in November. In December, the Reno 4 4G, the F11, F11 Pro, F11 Pro Marvel Edition, which is definitely really cool. The A9, the A92, the A72, and the A52. So the A52 is going to be there in December. So that's by the end of 2020. Starting 2021, we're going to be looking at basically as the Reno 10X Zoom, the Reno 2, the Reno 2F, the Reno 2Z or Z, the Reno 3 Pro 5G, the A91, and of course the F15. So if you have those first qu first quarter, so basically between January and March in 2021, second quarter is going to be really cool. We're going to be able to see the Reno, the Reno Z or the Reno Z, the A5 2020 edition, and the A9 2020 edition, which are obviously going to be new devices coming up next year. So. Keep in mind, those are going to be the ten, this is basically tentative dates, but again, excluding carrier specific devices as well as the European devices for the beta. Final version will be released to those devices and of course have to go through their own uh, regulatory process. So this isn't the first time I've been able to play with the beta on my Find X2 Pro. I did a video for you guys not that long ago talking about the cool new features. Of course, that was an early beta build that didn't really have anything. It was basically more of a proof of concept. What we have now is literally a beta, so it's almost like a daily driver running edition. Uh, there's a few bugs here and there, and of course, there's a lot more features that we can definitely dive into. Please let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite of the ones that I shared with you guys. And if you'd like me to do more videos specifically on like maybe the, just a deep dive into the camera application with the new features, and of course, other things that we have with ColorOS 11. Uh, there's going to be more features that are going to be coming out. Not everything that I shared with you guys today was obviously available currently on all devices. As I said, um, I'll try to give you guys a link in the description below, and I'll also try to tweet out uh, the rollout plan for you guys to be able to reference. Um, short answer is, this is super exciting. Less than a week after Google announces Android 11 available on all Pixel devices, Oppo is actually uh, enrolling and wanting people to try out if they have a Find X2, Find X2 Pro, or even Find X2 Pro uh, Lamborghini Edition to try out all the cool new features on them with the beta that they have rolling out. So like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support. Thank you to Oppo for, again, uh, allowing me to have access to the beta, but not only that, also providing me the device to be able to share with you guys my opinions of using ColorOS 11 on my Find X2 Pro. This is TK. I'll see you guys in the next video.